Hey there, YouTube friends. Welcome to Planet Coaster 2 and the Mediterranean Sandbox map. We're going to turn this map into a Viking inverted coaster here in Sandbox. I'm so excited to show this to you, and I had a blast playing. Uh, I'm Mass Bandit. This is Planet Coaster 2. Thanks so much for being here today. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and we are going to open up the coaster map and we are going to go to create custom. In Planet Coaster 2, it defaults to blueprints. If you want to create your own, you'll have to do this. And we're going to go ahead to the suspended and we have all of these available to us here. And we're going to go with the inverted four seer. We're going to build that. And let's jump into a real quick little stop motion as we build this coaster together. So all I was really trying to do here with this layout is get a feel for the coaster builder here in Planet Coaster 2. If you've played a lot of Planet Coaster 1, then this should feel real comfortable to you. It is very, very similar. Uh, but what I like about it a lot more than Planet Coaster 1 is that it kind of, uh, it kind of takes away a lot of the wobble, which is really nice. Um, the smooth tool, the new smoothing tool is really good. Uh, it works a lot like the 4 meter smoothing method that we use in Planet Coaster 1, but it gives you a button to move forward and backward. I'll talk more about smoothing in a little bit. But yeah, just a very simple layout here, reminiscent of like a mid to late 90s inverted coaster. Five inversions, and it, it made me feel real good that this was a joy to do because I did find the coaster tough in Planet Coaster 1. So you can see, even someone with minimal coaster building skills such as myself <laughs> can even get a real nice layout here with Planet Coaster 2. I think the coaster builder in Planet Coaster 2 is one of the really big strong points um, in the game overall. I, I feel like the smoothing tool is phenomenal. And I'm going to go over that in another video where I go over my pluses and minuses of Planet Coaster 2. So if you haven't seen that, be on the lookout for that after you watch this video, of course. But yeah, look at this. I'm really pleased with this. I think the in-game loop's pretty good. I did make a custom corkscrew right here. It might not be as snappy as a B&M, but you know what? For me, it absolutely works. Um, one thing that I was having struggles with, and you might as well, is on the terrain i did turn collision with terrain off yet i was still having where the coaster was tunneling and in order to fix that what you need to do is when you go into edit coaster you click on a piece of track and click go to construction mode you got to be in construction mode there's a little there's some fiddly bits about this but there's an edit and a construction mode construction is where you're placing the track edit is where you're shaping and moving the track which is a little confusing but anyway here we are in construction mode and if you go up to settings you will see there is an auto tunnel and if you turn that off you will be able to clip through the ground i prefer that it allows me the freedom to build without having to worry about massive terrain shifts and then i can do it on my own afterwards to my own specifications a little bit more control and if that's something you're interested in then that's how you can do that uh, yeah so this is our coaster and it's really nice it rides two very very it's two very very well um and now we've got to theme it. And the theme that I was most interested in was the Viking theme. So I would love to go ahead and jump into a bit of a time lapse as we go over the Viking theme and building some, uh, some of the station. So here we are. I decided to do a time lapse today because I think uh, it's good to hear with the new game for those of you who are interested and maybe still on the fence or just want some a look at how someone else creates to really do this. Don't expect time lapse regularly. This is not something I, I really do anymore. I've really gotten away from time lapse. Uh, partially because of probably what's going to happen here. <laughs> I end up just sort of rambling, which isn't my favorite thing to do. Uh, I'm going to try to stay as much on task as I can, but uh, I am going to say here that uh, time lapse is not going to be the regular feature of the channel. There's a lot of just sh building off camera and showing the progress. But here I figured you all can take an opportunity here to see the pieces that I'm using. Pause if you want to to get a better look at what's available here in the Viking scenery set. I did try to stay almost exclusively in the Viking scenery set just to really wrap my head around it. We are very much building in the Planet Coaster scale, which is uh, huge. 
<laughs> it's very large. There are statues of peeps in the game. I do believe they're part of the mythology set, and I believe they're supposed to be peeps that were turned to stone by Medusa, which is really fun and cute, but what's really great about those pieces is that they are the exact height of a peep. So if you like Archer for Scale from Planet Coaster 1, we have uh, we have stone peeps <laughs> as our archers here in Planet Coaster 2. But yeah, this is the Viking scenery set. It gives strong How to Train Your Dragon vibes. Uh, some pieces, like the arched roof there, the curved roof pieces, and these pillars are very Viking-centric. It's going to be hard to use them in other themes. Uh, however, the walls, and the, especially the stone walls and the basic wood walls, are really, really nice. All recolorable, uh, which I didn't do much of uh, as far as recolorability. But yeah, I think they are really good for lots of generic purposes. I know people were upset that there's no western. These wooden walls kind of look a little western. There's a couple different wooden wall sets in the game uh, outside of this scenery set. So I believe with more time to explore what's there, we will be able to really uh, knock it out of the park. Here, there is a new tool, at least new to PC, that is a scenery snapping tool when you're in the advanced move, and you can snap it to, I think, as small as a quarter grid or an eighth of a grid, all the way up to four meters, uh, which is really cool if that's something you're into. I still, just because it's what I'm used to, prefer the free build, uh, the free, you know, the, the non-snapped <laughs> advanced move tool, but yeah. It's it's a nice uh, it's a nice addition to the game for those who want it. Uh, these wooden beams, by the way, are actually not Viking scenery. I believe they're part of the resort scenery set. But with the rope on there and the rustic look and the recolorability to make them match the wood that we already have going on, it was a really nice touch, and I think it adds quite a bit without detracting from the Viking theme. And that's actually one of the things that a lot of the uh, themed pieces have. There are several pieces, I believe, in each theme that will work really well cross-pollinating with other themes. I don't think you're going to be stuck using Viking pieces in just a Viking scenery set. As I said, we're using the Tiki theme, basically, the resort theme here in our Viking scenery. And I think it looks really well. I think they complement each other quite nicely. It adds another material, too, with the rope here. Uh, it's a lot of metal and wood in the Viking theme, so the addition of rope I don't think is out of place, and I think it, it fits in quite nicely. Speaking of wood, these wooden pieces here, I love the, the kilter of them, the, the off-kilter. Uh, I don't do a lot of scenery scaling in this episode because, again, I'm just trying to get used to the pieces, and honestly, I kind of sometimes forget it's there. As I get comfortable with the game, I sort of fall into old tropes and just start doing things as I'm used to doing, and it's easy to kind of forget. <laughs> it's easy to kind of forget. Um, I found these awesome banners. There's a whole bunch, and again, not necessarily Viking. Some of them are very clearly Viking, but some are not. Some have a bit more generic theme, and again, with the recolorability, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how people will use these beyond their intended purposes. I think it's pretty fun, so. Here we are adding some dragon type stuff. Like I said before, this gives strong how to train your dragon vibes, which I really, really enjoy. Um, I'm very excited for Epic Universe. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, you'll notice this is taking me quite a while to build. Uh, I can't wait until I'm faster <laughs> at this game. A lot of it is because of all the new pieces and not knowing what's there, and I have to go hunting for things. Another part is currently in the state, at least the version of the game I'm playing, things are not where they need to be. There are roof pieces that are put in the wrong column, in the wrong area, like pitched roof pieces in the flat roof piece area there are wooden supports in the metal area like there's just some things that don't make a lot of sense and then also one of the big things one of the big negatives that I have with Planet Coaster 2 which I, I get into more in my video my breakdown video is um, the nesting of menus um, one of my friends said it was like they're getting paid by how many clicks they can get you to make 
Uh, it, it's kind of frustrating when you want to build. You have to go into the scenery tab and then go into the building tab and then go into the pillar tab and then there's just a lot of clicking and it's a lot more difficult to get in and out uh, of menus. Nothing is as intuitive, at least not to me coming from someone who has almost 2,000 hours in Planet Coaster. Um, I get that it's going to be different, but I don't think this was different in the correct way, <laughs> in the correct direction. Uh, but that being said, there was a pretty steep learning curve for me. The first eight or so hours, six to eight hours, I actually was quite disappointed. I was not happy with my time in Planet Coaster 2. However, once I found a couple shortcuts, uh, specifically the ability to right-click things, and just sort of once I accepted the fiddliness of it all, um, I fell into a groove and the pace did pick up. So if you are playing Planet Coaster 2 and you're relatively new or you have lots of hours in Planet Coaster and you're feeling a little bit frustrated after two or three hours, I'm going to encourage you uh, to give it a bit more time before you throw in the towel because I think, especially if you have lots of hours in Planet Coaster, you will find your workarounds. You will find your... You're, you will find your speed again. Uh, we're getting there, I'm getting there, as here we're playing with some lighting, which is beautiful. Uh, I do wish they cast it a bit bigger glow. But yeah, that is my biggest issue, is the, the, the user, the UX, not the UI, the UX. Like, the UI is fine, it's very large, but the UX is, is I'm not a big fan of. Um, also, if you noticed here at this nighttime portion, the sky does not get completely dark. That kind of surprised me and kind of threw me off a little bit. It's so blue. Um, I don't know if that's a map, if that's a Mediterranean map thing, or if that's just what nighttime looks like in the game, but I am, I am none too pleased with how that looks. Nighttime's beautiful, <laughs> except for the sky. So, yeah, uh, here we are trying to add some extra lighting using some techniques from Planet Coaster 1, using these floods and really desaturating them so that it looks more like the lights we put in are casting more of a glow. Um, I'm not sure how well I, I sold the whole idea, but uh, yeah, it, I, think, I think overall I'm pretty pleased with this for my first effort in Planet Coaster 2. <laughs> Hopefully you agree with the direction this station is going. As we wrap up this time lapse, we're going to jump into real time and jump a forward in time a bit to a bit more completed state. So I did want to come in and give you all a look at the station here in real time, slow it down a bit, show you what it looked like in its 80% glory. <laughs> I have gone ahead and recolored the coaster as well as you can see to better go with the theme, but I do believe there's going to be another color change later on. But we can start to see some of the foliage here. These are the Scott Pines. I believe that's a Scott Pine if I go into the group. Yeah, Scott's Pine large tree. I think it's uh, very lovely, very skinny, which is cool. Um, some of the foliage does look a little stylized. It's not quite as hyper-realistic as maybe Zoo, but it's a big step up from where we came from in Planet Coaster. And I'll tell you what, these rocks with the moss on top are just absolute chef's kiss. This is going to be phenomenal. There's a huge selection of rocks. Um, if you are interested in seeing uh, specific pieces or laying out scenery sets, I can absolutely do that in future videos. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you want to see. I'm here to provide information for you on Planet Coaster 2. Uh, uh, we have, you can see, I did uh, make a bit of a cattle pen here, which was a bit of a struggle. But um, to show you how it works, to show you how we get that done, I have yet another time lapse. I figured in this first video here we would do a lot of time lapse that would allow you to see the process a little bit better than these cuts. Uh, eventually we are just going to be doing the cuts though and, and, and moving a bit away from the time lapse. But let me show you how I got to make to get this to look the way it does because it wasn't necessarily easy. And just know what you're up against if you're looking to make these kinds of cattle pens. 
The path tool is great in Planet Coaster 2, and the path tool sucks in Planet Coaster 2. That's the best way I can describe it. It is so powerful, and it can do so much, that it's really hard to get it to do what you want. And I think until we really get into the nitty gritty of it, and we figure out how to use it, it's going, it is going to be in control more than we will. So here I am playing with individual nodes, and you can see how fiddly and tedious it is. There is no snap to grid or anything like that at this point, which makes lining these fences is up really challenging but it is doable it just takes some time so there you go hopefully that gave you a better idea of how to accomplish the uh to, to accomplish the cattle pens there. We still need to decorate it. We still need to give it some cover, but you'll notice the coaster has changed colors and that has to do with the name of the coaster, which we have named Moonin. I'm probably saying that all kinds of wrong. It is one of Odin's two ravens in Norse mythology, which I thought made perfect sense for our uh, Viking themed coaster here. So that's what I have. I love these runes, these pieces with runes. There are several pieces. Everything you see here, or at least most of what you see here, is the Viking theme. Love these little statues. They have ones that actually look like they're holding something, and you can put a beam in them. Uh, probably show you those another time. Um, but yeah, we've created this entrance plaza with the new path tool. It was really easy peasy. Uh, I'm going to probably do a breakdown of the path tool in a future video, but yeah, uh, it's, it's very powerful. It does take some time to get used to it, but we go ahead and we drop this cool scenery piece in here, which is actually triggered when the coaster does the overbank turn here. Um, the little guys will hammer and the sequencer is all different as I'm sure you're all aware of, but yeah, this is what we're coming up with. And I am actually most proud of this area right here with this Viking wall and these cool wood pieces to act as trim. And then the don't die fencing. This is not Viking theme, obviously, but we have our don't die fencing just to kind of balance it. And while these pieces are so heavily themed, one of the things I'm going to really want to do and one of the things I really like to do in Planet Coaster, uh, both one and here in the sequel, is to ground the projects in reality. I like heavy theming, but I also like that generic look. And I also like to make sure that anything, regardless of what I'm building, looks feasible and at least implied realistic. We might be missing the extreme nitty gritty details, but I think this looks pretty realistic like something you'd find in a park. A mid-tier budget with what we've got going on with the themed benches and the wall and things like that, but not hyper-themed that you can that we'd hide all this don't die fencing. That's kind of my, my, my niche. You can also see here we're taking advantage of some of the new terrain painting here. This is gravel mixed with some sand, and we're using those awesome rocks again to kind of carve this out. And that's what I was talking about earlier. This is now, you know, I was able to do all of this on my own. I didn't need the game to, you know, dig it out for me. And it created this really awesome interaction here. And I fed the queue through here. I just, I think this would be an awesome queue to wait in. And I love the subtle, look at that. I love the subtle variations in terrain here. I think that's a really strong part of this layout and this design. Just these little trenches here in the back half of the ride to maintain speed um, and give the sense of speed and provide some good foot shoppers. I think that's really, really cool. There's still a bunch of work to do here. We have to cover all this up and that's gonna be for a future episode. I do believe that with all the time lapse and kind of going over the Viking theme, this is a good place to stop. In the next episode, we'll probably finish up the coaster portion and start detailing the area around it. I'd probably like to add a few shops and things. So if you are excited for this little Viking mini project, do hit the like button and consider subscribing. If this is your first time seeing me with the, uh, you know, all the Planet Coaster 2 content, hey, this is the kind of stuff we're going to be doing for the foreseeable future. I am all about it. I have over 2,000 hours in Planet Coaster, and uh, so I'm excited to sink numerous hours into this game. So yeah, do me a favor, subscribe, hit the like button, and tell me what you are looking forward to, or what should we add? How should we dress this up? Because it's an open it's an open map right now so i think that's gonna do it for us uh if you are uh, if you would like to know more about some uh my thoughts on planet coaster 2 you can check out my video going over the things i really enjoyed and of course some of the things that i didn't uh in this video here and uh, with all that being said have a great day great night great whatever and i'll see you all for some planet coaster 2 real soon take care everyone talk to you later Bye bye <laughs>